on. All right. Awesome. We are live. So we're just waiting on Amy uh, to share this with people. Um, people are going to start showing up soon. But yeah, so guys, for those of you who are starting to join on, we are talking about PPC and I have one of my best friends, uh, Sean Smith here with me. Uh, Sean, what's up, man? How's it going? Uh, dude, I'm doing really, really good. I, Dude, I'm just super excited to do this with you, man. Uh, I don't yeah. know, man. <laughs> who would have thought, dude? Like, we've been working together for like over a year, or how long have we been working together now for? Like, over a year. Yeah, we've been working. Yeah, we've been working together for. Yeah, I think I think more than a year. It feels like longer, honestly. I think it's like at least a year and a half. And uh, yeah, who would have thought? Like, like from from where we started working together to now, it's just amazing, man. It's so cool. Yeah, it's, cr it's crazy, man. And uh, yeah, we started working together how. I remember um, I was like, okay, I'll tell you guys a story. So I use this company called CPC Strategy, which I don't recommend. <laughs> and they managed our PPC and they really, really, really sucked. So I was just struggling trying to find someone to replace them. My A cost was what, like at 40 or 50%? I think something like that. It was like around that. 50. Yeah, 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 yeah. 50. Oh my God. And I was just like so stressed out because we were bleeding money. And then I saw your YouTube videos and I was like, this guy seems like he knows what he's talking about. So I hit you up on LinkedIn. You finally respond to me. And then immediately on our first conversation, I was like, dude, this guy knows what he's talking about. I want to try him out. So that, I, I think that's how the story went. That, dude, that's exactly how the story went. You reached out to me on LinkedIn. We got on a call. And um, I, dude, it was literally me, like by myself. Like <laughs> I didn't have anybody. Like I didn't have, you know, I was just, it was just one guy sitting at a computer. And um, yeah, we just started working together. And dude, it's, we, I mean, for a year and a half now. So it goes to show that we're, we're, we're like growing together, which is super yeah, dope. Man. Yeah, man. Seriously. What's up, Ben? Welcome, man. Tony, good to see you here. Ben, um, oh, man, ben. <laughs> so, so Sean, why don't you kind of give everyone just a good sense of like, you know, what you do. Okay. So we started together. I was probably one of your first, like, you know, seven figure accounts or sorry, eight figures. Eight, and you um, were, yeah, you were. The yeah, I was seven figures. figures and then we did eight figures. But, uh, but yeah, so, so, you know, where are you now? Like, tell, tell us more about like, you know, what, what you do now and, and uh, yeah, why we should listen to you. Definitely. So, uh, we, so basically I started about two and a half, three years ago, I started doing PPC services for Amazon sellers. And that was cause I had a digital background. I used to do SEO and so I was really strong. And I noticed like a lot of people didn't have that. And so I started helping people locally and I did a workshop locally. And then I started kind of like, uh, charging for like coaching and services and then really just made sure that I was in the right community and made sure that I was honest and uh, built relationships as I as I refined my skill set in PPC. And then, yeah, dude, started hiring people. It's been about two and a half, three years. We have about, I think we work with like eight or nine people on our team. Um, and then we also have, we actually recently stopped taking on any new accounts. Like we just don't take on any new accounts because me and uh, Taylor Bentert of Better AMS, we launched a training program called the PPC AMS Accelerator. It's a seven week PPC AMS training program, basically taking the systems that we've built that to get the results for the people we work with and, you know, uh, publish those and, and give those to the, to, to sellers that need them. Awesome. Awesome. Cool, man. So you manage a ton of seven and eight figure accounts or you have managed a ton of seven and eight figure accounts. So, you know, uh, everyone who's like in here right now, if you, um, if you have trouble with PPC, just go ahead and let us know. Type yes or whatever. Tell us a little bit about, about your problems. And if you have questions, by the way, leave them in the comments and we'll make sure to answer them. But let's just get started. So, you know, I think one of the issues that people have with PPC is, is it's something, it's like a black hole, right? They're spending a lot of money. A lot of people aren't profitable doing it. So let, let's start with the basics. I mean, how can someone, when they're first launching a product, how can they utilize PPC effectively in their campaigns? So when you first launch a product, there are a couple of things I would totally look at. I would look at the price point of your product. So you need to look at the price point of your product because generally lower priced items have a higher conversion rate and higher priced items have a lower conversion rate. But again, if you have a lower priced item, you know, the cost per click of your market is really going to determine your A cost. And so, you know, keeping, keep being conscious of your price point and realistic with it, like understanding that a $10 price point you know, is going to be really hard to get a good A cost for definitely set budgets. So make sure that you say like, Hey, I want to spend X amount per day on, on the product. So like, you know, 40, $50 a day for that specific product, give it a budget and then monitor it over time and then see how the keywords perform. And then when you're launching a product, I highly recommend focusing on, um, really targeted keywords that describe your product really well. So, I mean, it's kind of common sense, but stuff that, you know, that, if somebody typed it in and clicked it, 
then they would buy it. But also using tools like like we we really like using Helium 10's Cerebro Reverse ASIN tool. We've been using that a lot lately. Yeah, uh, that's really cool for competitors. I also recommend actually. I mean, when you're launching, you don't have any data, but um, maybe for the fun of it, even if you've gotten a few sales, do a reverse ASIN on yourself. We actually get really good results doing reverse mm -hmm. ASIN on ourselves. When, when you say reverse ASIN, ASIN, you're talking about like Keyword Inspector, right? Actually, so like we we don't use that as much as we used to. We use uh, Cerebro by Helium mm -hmm. 10 these days. Uh, we used to use Keyword Inspector a lot, but we wanted to test something new, try something new. And we're getting a lot of good results with uh, uh, Cerebro, running reverse ASINs on ourselves. And awesome. that'll give you some competitor data. So in terms of launching, it's really all about like knowing what you want. Like, and also when you launch, you're going to have to tolerate a higher ACOS. And one thing to keep in mind is you need to figure out when you're going to get reviews because your ACOS is going to look different before reviews than it will after reviews. Right. And so if you're, you're launching PBC before you get reviews, you almost kind of want to like isolate that data set and put it to the side because it's not going to be as accurate as when you have those, even the just even one review, right? Even mm -hmm. one review, get those five stars. And so keep in mind that like, as you launch your products and, and you're running PPC that before you get a review, your PPC is going to look completely different versus after you get a review. So that data set before the review, it's almost not really, it's not really like super accurate. Totally. It's not going to be as accurate as after you get that review. So that, that, and so calculate your time frame to review because you know, you're going to need to spend money. Like if you're going to, if you want to push really hard and go out the gate, you're going to want to spend money, right? And so um, figure out how long it's going to take you to get that first review. Try to estimate it because the before and after is going to look different. Um, yeah. So totally. I would say, awesome. and then, yeah, dude, I can go. All right. Yeah. yeah. What else <laughs> no, no, that, that's awesome. Okay. By the way, guys, for all of you who just joined us, we just talked about ACOS. So uh, why don't you guys share your ACOS numbers uh, in the <laughs> comments below? I'm curious to see what people have. I think what well, we average somewhere between 25 and 30%, right, on our account. And I mean, for our products, it's pretty good. But I mean, you know, I think it, it totally dep depends on the categories, right? And, yep. um, you know, for those of you guys who don't know, can you just share, like, what exactly is ACOS and why is that important for people? Sure. Uh, ACOS, it, it's average cost of sale. And it's the, um, the amount of PPC spend. So the money that you spend on advertising divided by the sales that you generate. And so that's ACOS. And, uh, yeah. And so and, and and what's, what's a good ACOS? Like, like, how do you determine that? What's a good ACOS? Like the magic, magic number. Yeah. You know, it really depends on a lot of things. So for example, um, it depends on your profit margin. So in supplements and beauty, we're seeing that a, a cost needs to be a little higher because it's more competitive, but like in supplements, margins are a lot higher as well. And so, you know, somebody might have like 60, 70% margins so they can tolerate a higher a cost and they're going to need to because the average cost per click is really high. And usually the price points for supplements are lower. And so I would say, I mean, a good a cost, I would say the range is from like, you know, 10% uh, to like, 70 percent ish is kind of a range where like people are tolerant like that's what i would say it depends on the price point there's so many things but totally. that, that's depends on the co the company's goals man and what they want to yeah. do and so you, okay look so we see this right you mentioned that like um when you have a uh, uh when you have no reviews your a cost is gonna be dramatically different from when you do have reviews and so the same thing kind of applies to when you launch a product too right when you launch a product out the gate we found that our a cost is pretty high could yeah. you kind of give people a sense of like what to expect when they first launch a product? Because, you know, some people might see a crazy high number and freak out. You know, what's something that that people can normally expect when they're launching? The Like 100 or something like that, around 100. Like if you're in the like after like a week or so, you know, 100 is fine. Um, if you're like 200 plus, I would say then it's like kind of concerning a little bit, like go in and chop it up a little bit. But like. You know, for the first few weeks, I would tell it maybe like a hundred ish. And then you're going to want to go down by like, uh, you know, it's going to go down over time as you cut the bleeding keywords. Um, and as you get, and then when you get the reviews, that should really help as well. So that's kind of what we're seeing for launches. You know, like a lot of the sellers we work with are pretty aggressive and they'll tolerate a high A cost out the gate. And then we'll just bring it down over time. Right, right. That makes sense. That makes sense. And it, and it could also be an indicator, right? So if you have like a crazy high A cost, let's say it's 200% plus over a period of time, it might mean that it's it's too competitive or, you know, you're not targeting enough keywords. I mean, it could be a couple different threats, right? 
Yeah. So one really good indicator is if you're targeting keywords, like if your keyword set like describes your product pretty accurately and you're not converting for those, like what you should, like what we would consider highly relevant terms and like, it's not, those aren't performing at all. Then yeah, like it goes back to an inventory decision. It's like, man, like I'm not getting, I'm not getting a lot of organic sales. The keywords that exactly describe my product are not converting. And so it's like, man, like, what do I, what do you do? And that's where people get like really worried. Like, because if you're not converting for a keyword that describes your product, it's like, you're not going to convert for anything else. Right. That's just not how it's going to happen. And so then that's when you have to be like, Hey, like, is this a stinker? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, totally. It's something we, we talk about all the time. And I think that also plays into to relevancy, right? Oh, by the way, guys, b- before you start, Sean, I want to hear where you guys are coming from. Uh, I see we have like 20 people. Uh, leave some comments. Would love to hear where you guys are joining us from. So leave them in the con- comments below. Uh, Sean, you're, you're talking to us from Chicago, right? Yeah, I'm in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, yeah. man. Awesome. So, okay. So let's dive into um, to relevancy. I think this relates to relevancy. So you mentioned if you're not converting for your keywords on ACOS, uh, sorry, if you're at, if you have a high ACOS for you know, like the keywords are really relevant. Let's say it's a garlic press and it's garlic press. It could be that it's you know it's very competitive, or yeah. it could also be that Amazon isn't seeing your listing as relevant, right? I think this is a term that um, that is becoming more and more important: the relevancy of how Amazon evaluates your listing. So could you speak more to that and how it relates to PPC? All right. So I come from an SEO background. So I used to do SEO. And so like, you know, I'm a, I'm a keyword nerd, like SEO is my jam. And, um, you know, I was taught certain, I I was ingrained in my head as a Google SEO, these certain foundations and really what, what relevancy boils down to is indexation. That's all it boils down to, right? Like indexation, like, uh, I mean, you know, this isn't necessarily PPC related, but it it does really relate. Like if we're not indexed for a keyword, uh, you know, it, it affects PPC. So you got to make sure you're indexed for your keywords. Like that should be something you do fairly regularly and something you should really like hone in on. And so making sure you're, you're indexed for keywords is really important. And all indexation is, I mean, it's the most important thing for a search engine because a search engine is just a robot that uh, with a bunch of files, right? It's like a big file cabinet. And then whenever somebody types in like a search, like a, like a keyword, then what that happens, all the robots go to the file cabinets and then they pull right. all the all the files that 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 make sense that have like those words in it, and then they show you those files. So right. imagine in your head if you had a file cabinet, right? And you see, and it, each each file in the file cabinet had a word on it. And in your head, you were like um, blue wallet. Then you go to the file cabinet and you look for blue wallet. That's exactly what a search engine does. Totally. I know that's like, yeah. So yeah, indexation is it's so crucial, man. I would say making sure you're indexed is huge and making sure you're in the right category as well. I know that's not PPC right. as much, but completely fundamentally like really important. It I, will I totally agree. influence it. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Like the category piece is super important because I find that if I'm in the wrong category for the right, but uh, for the right keyword, my product might not even show up, which is really interesting. So yeah, that that's a key guys. Another thing, Sean, that you taught me that I think would be helpful for everyone who's watching is a good way to test whether or not Amazon sees your listing as relevant is by actually running like a manual campaign on your listing and yep. seeing the keywords that Amazon suggests, right? I mean, that just gives you oh, a, a specific idea of exactly how Amazon views your listing. If it's relevant, then that means you, you've optimized your listing pretty well. Yeah, we use, um, so when, you know, when we're kind of going aggressive and stuff and we want to do, we, we've seen, we've seen some really good results with suggested keywords. So if you go into your PPC campaign and you type create campaign, and then you add your product. So like, let's say you're selling like a blue, a wallet, a blue wallet or something, you add your product, it'll say add keywords or suggested keywords. You can actually copy and paste those suggested keywords and see how Amazon's like what Amazon comes up with. Um, and the more keywords, the better. And as you generate sales, those suggested keywords evolve over time. And totally. we've seen that those perform really well for us when we've got good products. And if you don't have a lot of keywords, then like, you could even submit a support ticket or you, if we know somebody at Amazon, be like, Hey, why don't I have a lot of keywords in the suggested keywords? Totally. Totally. Awesome. Okay, cool. So we got a couple questions. We got a bunch from Benjamin. Benjamin, love it. Thank you for uh, putting down a question. So I'm going to show this question. It is what's a typical click through rate percentage that you aim for? Do Dude. you uh, look, do you look more at a cost percentages and profitability rather than CTR? 
All right, Ben. Ben's my man, by the way. Ben's my, <laughs> I love Ben. So that's a really good question. Uh, so I was talking to the guys over at Press Design. They're like a software company, like a PPC software company a long time ago. And they ran a study figuring out if there's a correlation between CTR and like, like performance, like sales. And they didn't find one. And dude, honestly, I don't, I personally, dude, I mean, I'm going to get, I'm going to get roasted for this one. I'm going to get roasted, but I just don't. <laughs> I haven't seen, maybe I haven't run the right study, but I don't, I don't usually optimize for click through rate because I've been in situations where it's a high click through rate and the ACOS is way too high or the, or it just didn't convert. Right. And so like, you know, that could go back to a listing issue. I'm sure, but I like to optimize for ACOS. I like to optimize for conversions and ACOS as well. Uh, so I like to use ACOS just because that's a good one. But CTR, I haven't been able to correlate that. And we do, we work on so many accounts and uh, just haven't been able to go, oh, hey, haven't seen the data points. So uh, I would say a cost and profitability rather than just CTR for sure. Totally, totally. And and when you say you're optimizing for ACOS, you know, talk more about that. What does that mean to optimize for ACOS? Uh, and and so- how, do you, how do you go about that? How do you execute that? So it depends on the season as well. So keep in mind that season out, like right now in the summer season, we're having some like a costs are going up and traffic is going down uh, for a lot of our accounts. So we're, you know, keep in mind summer, you know, the market's going to correct itself and things like that. So um, basically you can kind of set a target and then basically you optimize towards that target using bid, bid manipulations. So just optimizing the bids based on the specific target. So what we'll like to do is find the difference between our, current ACOS and the target ACOS. So like if our current ACOS is 50%, it's it's simple, right? If our current ACOS is 50%, then our target ACOS is like, you know, 20%, then we would decrease the bid by 30%. But we do have a floor. So we have a floor. So like if it's, if that, the result of that change is 25% below the cost per click, then we default to 25% below the cost per click. Because even though it has ice, hey, high ACOS, we don't just want to drive it down and kill the traffic completely. Mm, interesting. Wait, so so does that apply to like, you know, let's say, because I know your method, right? You just literally, I mean, sometimes you take like a massive amount of keywords and just dump them inside and then you're testing a bunch mm-hmm. of keywords. So so like, I mean, it's it's insane. There's some keywords where it's like, I don't, I, I, I like couldn't imagine that being a, a good keyword and some sometimes they work and sometimes they yeah, don't. But you're true. saying sometimes like, you know, if it's relevant, but it's not driving much traffic, you want to, you want to decrease that bid and you don't want to shut off the keyword. Yeah. So what I was saying was like, if it's a high ACOS, so it's showing that it's selling, then you, you do want to decrease the bid if it's above your target, but you don't want to decrease it like so low that it completely Mm -hmm. takes it out of the advertising auction. And so we have a floor, we have a percentage floor for when we optimize for ACOS. So we give it a floor because I mean, Because, you know, if you're paying a dollar per click and you're like, you know, at like a certain percentage, well, I'd be willing to pay 80 80 cents a click, right? Because I know my ACoS is going to go down, right? So I'm not going to get as much traffic. I'm going to be in a different spot on the ad auction, but my AC also do go down. Because really what you're trying to do is drive down the CPCs, which that's like the kind of goal of bid optimization is drive your cost per click down. Because you want that, you because when your cost per click goes down, then your ACoS goes down along with it. Got it. Got it. Awesome. And so, you know, I also want to address the second part of that that question, Ben, which is like optimizing for profitability. So that's something that I think a lot of sellers have difficulty doing, right? Yeah. And, you know, we've come up with a really interesting strategy that, that I really love. And that ha- relates to like allocating a percentage of revenue towards PPC. So yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah, could you talk more about that? Like, like, you know, that strategy and how, you know, sellers might be able to apply it. Yeah, you use that one. Uh, you taught me that one, actually. So thank you. <laughs> you taught me that one back in the day. Yeah, dude. Uh, so we basically do a percentage of revenue. So what will happen is like, we'll calculate um, what the daily sales are, and then we'll take a percentage of that. So I think we do. So we're willing to spend on a daily basis, 6% of our total revenue uh, towards advertising. And then what that does is it cuts it off. So the benefit is we cap our daily spend so that even though we keep selling, so it increases the margin, even, even if the ACOS is high, right? It'll still increase the margin because you're cutting the spend and you'll still get sales. Um, the only drawback is that, you know, you might run out of budget throughout the day. 
and then your yep. sale and then um you know you're not showing the ads on, on the, your, your ads aren't showing right right but right that yeah, does i mean in a, right yeah it, it helps if um if some people find that their their ppc spend is out of out of control so let's say you know you're averaging you know 50 to 60 percent a cost and there's no way for you to cut it down because it's a highly competitive category you know it might be beneficial for you know some of you guys to actually budget out your ppc and say okay i'm going to track my daily spend against my estimated daily revenue for this particular SKU, um, and to, and that way you can make sure that you know, hey, I budgeted six percent or eight percent of my revenue, and I know I'm going to be unprofitable or I'm going to lose some money, but it's okay. I'm only I'm only giving away a certain percent because you could theoretically just let your PPC loose at that ACOS and you'd be bleeding money. Um, but obviously, the ideal situation is let's say you know your target ACOS, you hit your target ACOS, which is below um, your margin. And yeah. so you're actually profitable on every single scale sale. Then you can just like let your your PPC run wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could. You we uh you kind of could. So like I would say there are a couple exceptions like Prime Day and Christmas. Oh, yeah. You know, you want to cap those days because even if you get a sale from PPC, like it might not be. You know, we cap those days because you know it ends up being more profitable if we cap the actual daily spend on those specific days because it goes wild, man. Totally. Well, okay. So what's your strategy for, um, you know, for building campaigns in your PPC around like prime day or holiday seasons? Like what would you recommend that people do? Um, so for prime day, um, so actually like I've been working with Amazon, I'm sure everyone on this call who's selling on Amazon has been re you know, a rep has reached out to you and said, we have a new tool that looks at 2017 prime day data and uh, analyzes it. And we're going to use this tool to launch new campaigns. Well, I did it. And it's just really high bid auto campaign. <laughs> so like, I, I don't know, I'm a little worried. You know, like, I was thinking like, they were going to crunch some data, and then output some like amazing keywords or like, do something crazy. It was just auto campaigns, man. That's all it was it was auto campaigns. So that's what Amazon is kind of telling you to do. And then they what they do is they'll upload them and put like specific date ranges. What we do is we increase the bids by like maybe 20%, uh, like the day before and the day of, and then we'll, inc we'll cap the daily budget. So we're going to cap the daily budget. Um, we'll just come up with a percentage. We'll, we usually do it like client by client basis and we'll cap it, but we need to make sure we cap the daily budget. And so that's what we do. We try not to go too crazy. Um, in terms of creating new campaigns and stuff, I mean, the main thing we'll probably do is like pull search terms and test unique search terms. Um, but generally if you have a well-optimized account, it'll just, tend to work well automatically. Okay. Awesome. And what about like Christmas time? The same thing apl applies. Yeah. Um, Christmas time is really cool because, um, the same thing applies, but I like to bid on like, like holiday keywords, still like stocking stuffers, Christmas gifts, things like that. I like to test those. Um, because for example, you know, father's day is in a few days and you know, I know like I have some, I, I work with some people where we have like really Father's Day -y products and yeah. they're killing it for Father's Day keywords, like really long tail stuff too. And so, you know, when it comes to holidays, you know, I get on calls with people, nobody does it. Nobody does it. Nobody bids on holiday keywords really. Um, and so um, if you have like holiday relevant keywords, I highly recommend testing those like Mother's Day, Father's Day, um, any national holidays where you can relate it, um, Easter things like that, because you will see a spike. And what I do is what I always do, I go to Google Trends. So for holidays, I go to Google Trends and I type in like Father's Day gifts. And then I look for when the, when the, when it, the searches kind of start trending up. And then what I'll use is that day as the, the start date of my campaign. And then I'll do the day after as my end date of my campaign. And then I'll let those run and obviously optimize them over time. But yeah, that's kind of what we do for the holidays. Mm. And, and well, for the holidays, like, do you find that the PPC campaigns still work even if like, let's say the back end search terms don't have, let's say Father's Day or holiday gifts or Christmas gifts, like do, does a PPC campaign still work or you have to, no, you have to have you, it in there? Yeah. Yeah. You want to make sure you're indexed, man. Like okay. I, I've like, okay, I haven't run any formal studies because back end search terms is not my jam, but yeah, <laughs> dude, I've been in situations where I was wondering why we weren't getting any traffic. And then I was like, we're not indexed. I used, um, uh, there's an extension that I use to see if we're in, like we were indexed or whatever. Um, so, you know, what I'll do is, uh, if, if somebody wants to do the father's day, like if I feel like their, their products are eligible for, for that specific holiday, if, if your products aren't eligible, like it's completely irrelevant, 
then I might not even ask. But like, if it's super relevant, um, then I'll be like, Hey, here's a list of the keywords that we're going to test. Try to get indexed for these. Um, but these, I, I, I put together a pretty comprehensive list. So usually can't index for all of them, but you know, really getting the, the core one, like father's day gifts is, is really important. Cool, cool. And by the way, that tool you're talking about, um, I know because we use it too. It's, it's keyword index checker, right? That yeah. Chrome extension. Yeah, KW index checker. It's yep. awesome. So, so guys, you should definitely check your listings. Make sure you're indexed for the keywords that you're looking for, and you can easily do that by using this Chrome extension. Um, I think you can also use Helium 10 for that too, right? You can do like an index checker, I think, on there as well. And uh, seller tools, most of the keyword tools have this ability to check whether you're indexed for keywords. Um, and definitely make sure you're checking against that because if you're not indexed, you're not your PPC is going to be mad expensive or it's not going to work at all so so yeah make sure you check that cool guys we have another question from ben and here it is it's what's the best structure for ppc campaigns this one i I think you have a lot to talk about Um, is it okay to use multiple unrelated keywords in an ad set or have it tightly grouped um, and related as an adword style uh the best structure so the, the, the the way that we structure it is we put the skew um so like, for example, like when we pull search terms, we'll put the SKU plus um, uh, like an acronym that describes the method that we use to pull that search term plus the date plus our plus the match type. So that's how we structure PPC campaigns. And each each ad, each campaign gets its own match type. So each campaign gets its own, own match type. So like exact phrase broad. That way we can co- control the campaign at the ad group uh, level. Um, mul- is it okay to have multiple unrelated keywords in an ad set? Um, uh, so we'd have to define unrelated. So like, uh, like the way we'll do stuff is like when we pull from the search terms, we use data. So, or tightly grouped in AdWords as an AdWords style. Uh, it, uh, we dude, I'm honestly like, since we work, when we work with like the bigger sellers, they're, they're pretty like liberal. And so like, you know, we'll take a very data driven approach and we'll just like use numbers to decide which keywords we want to test. And so like, for example, if you've got a keyword that is from your search term report that has only like one or two orders, it might not be as relevant, um, but we'll test it in phrase and broad at a lower bid. But if it's got three or more, then we'll, we'll keep that in a higher bid. So, you know, we like to use the Amazon's data to kind of determine uh, which keywords we, we test. Um, and dude, you'd be surprised uh, which keywords convert that might seem unrelated. We've been in situations where like, you know, th- you know, it's just crazy, man. I mean, I, yeah, it, it, <laughs> I can't explain it. Sometimes <laughs> we'll just convert for stuff that like is just like, and we'll kill it. Like we'll do really well, like um, for like keywords that are just like uh, other brand names or um, stuff that might not seem relevant that, that ended up converting really well for us. Because as you like with higher volume SKUs, so with higher volume SKUs, you can really cast the net a little wider, like categorically, and you can even convert for other products as well. Um, higher volume SKUs tend to do a lot better on PPC uh, for a lot more keywords. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I mean, your, your point really hits home is you should constantly be testing these keywords over and over again, right? And testing them across exact phrase and broad. And yeah, and you, and you'll cycle through keywords. Your your keywords might go through cycles. So a keyword that performed poorly in summer might do better during the holiday season. And so you'll cycle through those. And um, that's why, like, keep pulling data and testing. It's good. Awesome. Uh, Shin Zhang says, "Preach him, Sean." So uh, and then we have <laughs> thanks, thanks Shin. Shin. And then we have uh, Sanjay Sharma. So he says. Do you use a formula for a new bid which reduces bid based on A cost and break even? Wait, do you use a formula for new bid? Ah, uh, this one's hard. Uh, hold on. For new bid. It, yeah. So like let's say we have a um for new bid. Um uh, I'm trying to like sorry, Sanjay. I'm I'm uh, let's see, do you use <laughs> sorry, sorry. Because if it's a new bid, we might not have any data, right? So, um, so I guess, I guess what you're trying to say is do we use a formula to reduce bids based on a cost? We'll just go with that. Yeah. So we do use a formula. It's a pretty simple formula. It just finds the difference between your existing bid and your, 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 uh, current bid and your target bid, or I mean your current a cost and your target a cost, it finds the percentage difference and then it'll decrease it based on that percentage. So it is a formula. It's, uh, I mean, Hey, do you want the formula Sanjay? 
Yeah, if, if you guys want the formula, I mean, why don't you just share it, man? You should just share right, it. It's a gangster on. formula, right? It's <laughs> <laughs> it is the G formula. So we can get super super technical here since this is PPC related. Um, yeah, so um, let me pull it up uh, here. Let me get it real quick, and then yeah, I'll get it for you guys. I can answer. All right. So we're going to share this gangster formula, guys. Um, so yeah, Sean uses this for our accounts, and it works really, really, really well. But basically, it's it's a formula that he put together um, that you can apply to your bulk uploads, um, and you can put it down across all your bids, and it's based on certain rules. And yeah, he, he's found an awesome way to 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 automate that process. Where do I put it? Is this the chat little thing in the corner? Yeah. Yeah. yeah why don't, you know what? Chat. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you read it out and then I will share it in the comments. Okay. Uh, read it out. It's, it's impossible. Oh, <laughs> I, it, it's not, it's equals open parentheses <laughs> one minus open parentheses current a cost minus target a cost. You close parentheses twice and then you multiply that by the max bid. And then multiply that by the max bid. Wait, let me just make sure I got this right. So equals current a cost minus target a cost times the max bid. Hold on. Let me. Uh, is there a way that I can like paste it to you? Like to yeah, yeah, yeah. Text it to me, and then I'll, I'll post it in the broadcast. Uh, or no, no. Sorry. Do you have it on your? Uh, you can send it to me on Slack too. Yeah, yeah. Do that, dude. Hold on. Okay, cool, guys. We'll share this with you. Um, yeah, and then I think uh, Sanjay asked, and then do you use bulk uploads? Oh yeah, yeah, dude. I love bulk uploads. Um, man, I, you know, if it wasn't for bulk up, I mean, we use software as well. So like that really helps software is kind of like, you know, that's way more extensive, but when it comes to bulk operations, dude, uh, bulk uploads is amazing. I mean, when I found bulk uploads, like it was like a Saturday. No, no, it was like Thursday. I found out of bulk uploads and then like my whole weekend was shot. I was like, dude, I'm learning bulk uploads. Like, you know, Saturday night, you know, bulk uploads. That was my night. And it took me forever kind of to learn it and understand it. Not forever, but like one day. And um, yeah, dude, I use bulk uploads. It allows us to scale um, adding keywords to campaigns. It allows us to scale launching campaigns. It allows us to scale bid management. It allows us to scale adding negative keywords. Yeah. It just allows us to do everything. Awesome. Did you find it? I just sent it to you. Okay, cool. I'm going to post this up in the broadcast, guys. All right. Oh, yeah. I totally didn't get this one right. Okay. Hey, Sanjay, do you use bulk uploads? Yeah. Let us know, Sanjay. I mean, if you have a cool tip. All right, guys. That is the formula right there. You can see that on the screen. So why don't you walk us through this uh, formula real quick? Sure. So, I mean, you don't have to really care too much about the parentheses and the ones. I mean, really, all it does is takes your current A cost if it's like 50%. And then your target date cost, if it's 20%, then it multipli uh, multiplies it by the bid. Max bid means current bid. So uh, let's say uh, your bid was like a dollar and then your current A cost was like 50% and your target A cost was like 20%, then it would increase that to 70 cents. It would decrease it by 30%. Awesome. Cool. All right. Let's uh, keep going. If you guys have any questions about that, just let us know in the comments and then we can go ahead and, and dive in. And then let's see, Hung has a question. What's up, Hung? Is it normal to have a higher ACOS for a certain keyword when you just moved it from phrase match to exact match? Um, is it normal? That's a really good question. Is it normal to have that? I like in terms of like pattern, like noticing a, be a specific behavior. Um, I can't, I don't know the answer to that one. I really don't, man. That's a tough one to answer uh, because I, I, it, it, it varies. Like I don't have any strong data supporting one or the other, like, it, like whether or not it would be higher or lower. Cause sometimes we see higher a cost and sometimes we see lower a cost. Hmm. Is it usually the case that exact match is more expensive or is that not always the case? I think that's a really good question. I would say generally exact max is a little, I think is more expensive mainly because phrase and broad, it allows them to do more research and like, you know, you can get different yep. spots in the ad auction. So I'd say generally like exact match is higher. Plus, you know, everyone's taught to bid high on exact match. I mean, the, the whole industry is taught, Hey, bid high on exact match. So if everybody's doing it, then, uh, you know, the cost to play goes up. Totally. But you could have like, if it's not that competitive, you could have like a killer exact match and it would be super cheap. Right. But I guess that the oh, reason yeah. why it's expensive is because there's like a smaller audience of people to draw from since it's like exact. 
So there's like just less search volume. Yeah. And uh, it depends on like your, dude, there's so many things. It depends on like your market, like, you know, generally supplements, the exit, you know, it's way expensive, but yeah, there are instances where like exact match can crush it, but I would say gen- yeah, generally uh, exact is more expensive. Uh, whether or not it has a higher a cost really depends on your conversion rate and as well as your um, price point. Cool. Hung, I hope that answered your question. Let, let, let us know if that did. And uh, if you have a follow-up, let us know. Um, awesome. Okay, cool. So uh, Sean TK gave us some props. Thank you, Sean. And uh, Sanjay has another mm-hmm. question. I love it. So is there a limit of total keywords per campaign that you recommend so that all keywords get impressions? I see that if I put a thousand keywords in one campaign, only very few get impressions. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I haven't run a study on whether or not Amazon will like limit the amount of like keywords that like we'll say like, hey, only this amount of keywords will get impressions. But generally, that's just kind of how it breaks out. Like a small percentage get impressions. And I'm not sure why that happens. We don't like really focus on that too much. We just focus on keep launching like testing unique keywords. And um, so I don't know, there's, there's not, to my knowledge, I don't know what the limit of total keywords is per campaign. I know the ad group limit is a thousand, but you can add a lot of ad groups. So you could add, you have 10,000 keywords in one campaign. Mm -hmm. But um, in terms of like whether or not, I I do think there's like some truth to that, that like, you know, if you test a bunch of keywords, generally a small percentage of them get a lot of traffic. But I think that's like normal. I think that's how it would be on any search engine because generally that's how it breaks out. There's usually short tail keywords and longer tail keywords. Totally. Um, so I think it would break out like that. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 to add to that, I mean, you know, just the matter, just the fact that you have a thousand keywords tells me that you know it's likely that not all of them are relevant to your listing, right? To the the product that you're targeting. And remember, yeah. Amazon really hits home on relevancy. So if your listing isn't deemed relevant, you know, by Amazon, and it's a super long tail keyword, and there isn't search volume, it's unlikely that you're going to get many impressions at all to begin with. So you know, I would say that you know that they're probably. I mean, there's definitely less than a thousand keywords that one listing is going to be able to target, you know, just based yeah. off of the fact that, you know, even your listing itself is, is limited as to how many keywords get indexed. So, um, yeah, if you have a thousand different unique keywords, it's unlikely that all of them are going to get impressions. Yep. It's yeah. Awesome. Cool. I uh, hope that answered your question, Sanjay. Uh, all right, next, let's see. Ben asks any experience with manual day parting on Amazon PPC? This is a good one. This is uh, a good one. This is <laughs> like, good one. we all know certain timings, uh, like mornings convert better. So we actually tried this. You want to give him a, yeah, yeah. Ben's Ben's got the good ones, man. Yeah, man. He's got the Thanks, good ben. ones. Good question. No, Ben, you're really getting my neurons firing here. man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be smart when I'm old because of you, Ben. <laughs> you're building these connections in my brain, man. Um, so that's a really good question. We've tested it on three accounts. So our software uh, is able to do day parting. The reason I haven't, I used to be a, like a fan of it. Like I used to be like, hey, this would be cool. But we tested it on Nick's account. So we tested it on Nick's account. I tested it on two other accounts as well. We did. So for Nick's account, we day parted at nighttime. So we, we had a certain time at night that we would turn everything off and then everything on. And then we had, um, during the daytime, and then I had worked on another account where, uh, they calculated the, the most like volume times. And then we turned it off like completely. And I I never saw, I I didn't see anything that was like amazing. Like I, I, you know, the day parting thing, I I didn't find anything. I thought I had way high hopes too. I was hoping it would work out. And a lot of people asked me about this, but those three accounts that we tested it on, we did it for a while too. And we didn't see like, we didn't see like trackable improvement. We didn't see anything too, too drastic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wonder if the issue is also that Amazon just takes so long to refresh their data, right? I mean, yeah, with everything. True. And so it could be that when you're shutting it off and shutting it back on, it takes time for those accounts to ramp back up. I mean, that's, there is a delay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There is a delay. Brian, uh, my buddy, Brian Johnson, he knows, he, I think he knows the exact delay. I can't remember the amount, but yeah, there's yeah. a delay. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm going to guess that that's also part of the issue. You know, for those of you guys that are newer to to PPC, there's usually a, 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 like a what 24 to 48 hour delay of when you attribute sales to a specific keyword, right? Or is it longer? I, I forget. What's the exact cutoff? Uh, uh, it's up. To, so um, I think like they sent out an email pretty recent. Also, uh, I'm going to go back to Ben's thing. So we did do manual day parting for a while where we manually did it, but then since we got a developer. Um, we would just have the developer unpause and pause them because, dude, manually it was just like it, it's just. Yeah, I mean, it's just tedious. You just go in and click it, and uh, it's just you know one of those things you got to remember. But um, the second thing, what were you talking about, Nick? That I was gonna no. Be- I was just saying that, like you know, Amazon takes so long to refresh their data that yeah. I would assume that there's also a lag in some form of like you know if you were to shut off or pause your campaign to when it gets gets traction again because it used to be the case that like. Amazon would favor historically old campaigns. I don't know if that's yeah. still the case. Um, I don't know. What, what's your experience been with that? Generally, I don't like to test. Like, I don't like to like, like some people will be like, hey, if you take this keyword that's performing well and test it over here more aggressively, will it do better? I mean, I haven't run a formal study, but generally what I've seen is when you test a keyword again, it doesn't do as well usually if it has a stronger history. Um, we've also been in situations where like people would, take like AMS and they would run them in, uh, in a headline search in seller central and they didn't work as well. So I usually, I mean, if it, if it, I don't know if it's doing well, I don't usually like to bother it too much. And also I wanted to ask your, uh, answer your question about like data attribution, right? The one you you said afterwards. Yeah. So Amazon, I think they're getting better. Like they sent out an email earlier this year talking about how like the majority of the sales will be attributed in 24 hours. Like they were trying to get better at it. I could dig it up. It's in my inbox. And um, I think the the latest attribution is, is up to seven days. In the campaign performance report, they used to give you a 30-day metric, but they got rid of the campaign performance report. So I'm not sure if they still use the 30-day cookie, but they definitely don't attribute it, which kind of sucks, but that's totally fine. But if you go into your search term report, it'll show you like seven-day advertised sales, seven-day. So it gives you like, it, you know, it gives you that hint of a seven-day cookie. Okay, cool. Awesome. Ben has a, a follow up question. So we got a, a slew of them from Ben. Awesome. So <laughs> let's see. If you were planning to spend like $100 a day, would you try doing like a $1,000 per day budget and then pause it after the morning after $100 is spent? So we throttle the impressions Amazon shows us shows to us in a short period of time. Wait, so if you spend 100 a day, will you try doing like a $1,000 a day budget? And then Wait. pause it after the morning. And pause it after the morning after a hundred dollars. So is it a hundred dollars or one thousand dollars? So spend a thousand dollars. I mean, I think his goal is to spend a hundred dollars a day, but you're saying that your budget is a thousand, and then you, you you day part by pausing. Um. After. So we throw out to show us. Oh, wait, wait. Show. Oh, I'm confused actually. Oh, I don't, I don't know if that works. Like throttle the impressions Amazon shows us in a short period of time. Like, uh, is the assumption that like, if we do day parting, Amazon will like give us more impressions or like, is it throttle the impressions? Oh, okay. So like turn them on and is throttle mean like turn on and off. Right. I think so. I don't know. Uh, Ben, if you could clarify that, that'd be awesome, man. I'm going to um, hop over to dictionary.com real quick. <laughs> I think they actually, I think it means to like slow it down, but. Oh, okay. Throttle means also called, uh, is a horse controlling. It's like a pedal to stop the breath, to choke. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, okay. So, so he has a follow up to that. Does pausing campaigns and resuming it affect the way Amazon treats our campaigns? Like, Facebook, for example, actually, I, I know this because we were running Facebook ads. Facebook penalizes ads that are paused slash resumed. And from my experience, I used to have a campaign with 10 to 15% ACoS for many, many months, but went out of stock and got paused. When it came back, it was doing 20 to 30% ACoS and could never recover. Yep. Yeah, I would assume so. I mean, I mean, Nick, you know, we didn't see any, uh, we didn't see any uh, performance increase when we paused the campaigns at all. Like we literally so, saw nothing. Like I was thinking to myself, like, think about it. Like if we were able to pause and like our budget would go out. So uh, yeah, I would say that, I mean, I haven't run a study, but it, if, it, you know, it, it, <laughs> I mean, from a business perspective, if you pause the campaign, they don't make any more money. Mm-hmm. Um, so that could be one, that could be something that happens. And plus generally when you like um, 
start something up again, it doesn't tend to perform as well as it used to. Um, I don't know. Uh, like, like for example, like, um, there was a situation where like somebody brought like all their AMS campaigns to headline and, uh, like copied them and did, they just didn't do well at all. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it's because of that history. Hmm. I think Amazon favors history. Yeah. So, so what would you do like in, in Ben's situation, right? He's talking about, you know, it used to be 10 to 15% a costs for a ton of months. He went out of stock. Uh, the, it got paused naturally. Cause when you're out of stock, the yeah. campaign, um, you know, gets paused, you know, what can he do, uh, potentially to try to boost that back up? Oh yeah. I forgot to mention the out of stock part. Um, dude, I, I Dude, out of stock is one of those words that I hate to hear. I hate to hear the word out of stock. Like it's like, it gives me nightmares because it's like the longer you're out of stock, the nightmare gets worse because you never know how it's going to perform when it comes back. And um, I don't know, I, in terms of going out of stock, like I have been in situations where we had a, a product that was doing really well and then it went out of stock. I, it, one, of, one of the clients I work with in beauty and like, you know, it came back in stock and it just hasn't recovered at all. Like nothing, it's not doing as well as it was before. I always try to avoid going out of stock. Dude, out of stock is one of those things where like I get nervous about because you just never know how it's going to perform when it comes back in. Yeah. And um, usually I always tell people to kind of treat it like a relaunch um, where you where you try to like basically like trade it like if you were launching a product, you would try oh, to get yeah. the volume up, do what you would do during a launch to try to get the volume back up. Cause going out of stock, it's, um, uh, yeah, those are unknowns and I don't, yeah, those are unknowns, but generally what we've seen across the board is that when it comes back in stock, a cost is higher initially. And, um, it, it, P, you know, PPC tends to be a lot more difficult for us if we've been out of stock for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, I, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, and you know, some of the things it depends on how you, how, how accurately you watch the market but the market might change as well, right? Like if you're out of stock for a month or two, you know, all these competitors might be coming in and they might have more. Dude, if these competitors that came in while you were gone or even your competitors that weren't were in there before, they're going to keep gaining history and getting conversion history. And Amazon's going to favor that over you if you went out of stock. So it's kind of like a, I don't know, uphill battle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a theory and, and I'm literally just making this up right now. But my theory is that like, you know, in my experience, um, you know, Amazon will, and I know this through my lightning deals, right? So I'll run lightning deals and they used to be crazy effective no matter the product. And now I find that there's actually like a placement level regarding lightning deals based off of the history of the listing. So, you know, lightning deals used to be really effective for products that like did really badly and I just want to get rid of them. Now I can't even do that with a lightning deal or best deal. Um, and those are really hard to get. Um, and so my theory is that Amazon is constantly validating your sales performance and they use that sales performance to, de to determine your placement. So I would imagine that it would make sense that they do the same thing for PPC where, you know, if you've been out of stock for a while, that means your sales performance is really low. And just like you said, you might have to relaunch or you need to up your sales velocity by doing some kind of massive giveaway, you know, like a one day blast to like spike it so that maybe, you know, your PPC might be cheaper um, or your ACoS might, you know, you might give it a kickstart to where Amazon starts placing you um, positively for those, you know, keywords because you're competing with other people who already have way better sales performance because they haven't been out of stock. That's my guess, but I would imagine it's something that you might want to try. Is that what you do? I'm when sorry. You put back in stock. Uh, I mean, you know, honestly, like not all the time. Sometimes we do, but you know, for our most popular SKUs, usually it takes at least ten days to pack it. Yeah, well, I was just curious about your experience with being out yeah. of stock and what you guys do when you come back in stock. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, I mean, I think a giveaway does help. Like we use Zonjump, but I've been reading yeah. some people. And some people have been saying that the multi-day giveaways haven't been working as well. Yeah, and I've actually I read uh, an article by Anthony Lee, uh, you know, and, and Brendan Morris too, and, and they're talking about how like a massive one-day blast seems to be more effective now. So, really? um, yeah. So it's so it's interesting. I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff going on, and we have to test it ourselves. Yeah. That's interesting because it wasn't like that a while ago. Or yeah. actually, it originally was like people would use the one day blast and then it went into the intervals. And now I guess maybe some of the data supporting the one day blast again. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. They're constantly changing stuff. You know, that's how it is with Amazon. Um, but yeah, maybe try that, Ben, and see if that improves your ACoS. But I do know that like, you know, if let's say Amazon, you know, you might want to check your relevancy percentages too, because sometimes that changes as well. So uh, you know, I've heard, I've seen um, in my own experience, if, you know, you're, you're not relevant for a keyword and then you become relevant, you know, the PPC actually becomes cheaper. 
Um, so you know that might be something that you want to check out too. Amazon might have demoted your relevancy. I've seen that on some of my listings just out of nowhere. Um, and you can check that through. Really? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah it's pretty crazy. That's um, that's a really good piece of information to know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I actually looked at one of my listings the other day. I was like, what the hell happened? I'm to- I was totally indexed for these keywords, and now Amazon has scored me at like a fifty percent. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. Wow, dude, that's crazy, man. So yeah. crazy. It's yeah. wild, man. Yeah, man. Um, okay. So Diala has a question. So Diala, uh, that's is it possible Diala. to rank on page one with PPC alone without giveaways? Oh, that's a good question. I'll be honest. I really don't trick, uh, track rank that much. Um, you know, I, cause we just focus on the advertising side of things. Um, I would say from my experience, generally what I've seen, and don't worry, I I talk to clients about rank and I talk to people about rank. Like I like to know what's going on. I'm in a mastermind. You know, I I like to know how this is working. I would say um, if it's a really low competition market, I think it would be a lot easier than if it was like, I don't, I don't really, if you're like in beauty and you're selling a really competitive product, I don't think... I mean, don't quote me, but I, I don't think it's going to be very like you're not really going to get there. Um, just PPC alone, nah, it's it's not going to happen. If it's a really go, low competition market, we've seen some crazy, crazy performance. Um, one of our clients uh, that uh, we came in really low competition market. I mean, nobody in this like they're like a pretty big retail company. Um, and they, you know, they're massive in retail and they sell products that are really hard to sell. So there's almost no competition. And, uh, yeah, the PPC just like blasted them, like in a good way, like we were ranking and like sales, like went up like crazy, but that's cause it was super low competition and they weren't really bidding on any keywords, but yeah, PPC alone really helped there. So it depends on the level of competitiveness and generally like Amazon tends to get more competitive now, but like if you can get a low competition market, it's a lot easier to rank uh, with PPC than it is the higher comp- competition markets. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so we talk about this in our course and, you know, we've talked about this multiple times, at least for our business. Um, we usually are able to rank uh, for some of our products on the first page um, simply just because like the products that we choose just aren't competitive or it's a, it's in a very low competition category. So, I mean, and you and I, we talk about this all the time, Sean, right? Where, you know, I think the competitiveness plays such a massive factor as to how difficult it's going to be to market your product. You know, we usually don't do giveaways and sometimes, and most of the time PPC is enough for us and we might do a giveaway here and there just to kind of give it a little boost. Um, But we don't do massive giveaways anymore. I I just don't think, um, you know, that's necessarily sustainable. Um, And so, you know, if you, if you kind of follow the steps of making sure you're evaluating your competition properly, uh, ranking, um, for those keywords is going to be a lot easier. Um, that's, that's what we found. So yeah, it's definitely possible, but it depends on your product and category for sure. Um, awesome. Yeah, no problem. Diala. Uh, cool. All right. So let's see what other things can we talk about right now? Is there anything that, that we're missing, Sean, that you, you think is important for people to, to talk about or think about with regards to PPC? Um, uh, regards to PPC. Ah, oh, dude, hold on. Let me open my notebook here. We talked about, let's see. Okay. I, I actually have one. So we talked about okay. software tools, right? So, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, software yeah. Tools. So, so software tools, there's a couple of new tools that are coming up like my PPC pal, uh, Zon tools. Um, yeah. So, so what are your thoughts on these automated PPC tools that are coming out right now? Uh, well, you know, my first thought is like how, um, like speechless I am at the amount of tools that have been coming out recently. You know, a lot of sellers who started years ago, there was nothing out there. Like when I started doing PPC, like a few years ago, I invested in a developer because there was nothing out there that did what I wanted. And so like, it was like PPC scope version 1.0 at the time. Right. And now it's like everybody and their mom has a software tool for PPC. Um, uh, what are my thoughts? I don't know, man. I'll be honest. Like I don't really. I don't know, man, Uh, since we have our own developer and we build our stuff based on um, what our needs are, we don't test a lot of tools. I like to know the guy, like I know some of the people in the space and I like to talk to them because they're really smart. But, you know, I think tools are good. I think um, tools are only as good as the humans that build them and the humans that use them. And so 
you know, it's not going to be a complete workaround, right? Like I think automation is good for um, basically like getting rid of like menial tasks, but there are certain things that you can't automate. Um, I think in PPC. Uh, so I would say like, if you do use a tool, just, uh, you know, you, you definitely want to know like what it does, uh, how it makes changes, things like that. Um, there's so many, man. I mean, it's on tools. I, you know, Feedvisor is coming out with a PPC tool, oh, which cool. Feedvisor is, uh, aren't they like a price? Aren't they like yeah, a they're, they're a pricing tool? Yeah. They're, they're really like going hard on those software tools. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, yeah, it's, it's interesting because the tool thing, the, the tools of the automation, it kind of scares me personally. Cause I like having someone to talk to about, about PPC. Yeah. And I, I feel like, you know, especially if you're selling in a couple different categories, each one is going to have a different strategy, you know, around mm-hmm. keywords that you target, um, you know, or let's say you want to do mother's day campaigns or, or father's day, day campaigns. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those are things that you can't automate through a tool, but I mean, if, if I think one thing you could probably automate is like bid adjustments. Yeah. Right, that's something that you could probably automate. Um, but you know, if you want to, let's say, you know, increase your bids on something because your product just came back in stock, then um, you know, I don't know if you can do that through the tool. So there's a lot of different things that you know you might want to do in person. Um, but yeah, I, I would just say maybe down bidding that might be something that you can you can automate. Yeah, I agree. And uh, keyword research, it's it just you know that's a tough one to automate. That is that's a tough one to automate. And and then calculating starting bids, that's a tough one to automate. Um, bid optimization, I feel like, is the low hanging fruit, but uh, understanding uh, starting bids and things like that. Um, yeah, I would say those are those are tougher to automate. And uh, like you said, out of stock coming in stock. Um, yeah, those are, those are you know as as the the needs of the business get more sophisticated, you know the tool has to be more sophisticated as well, or the approach. And so you know, it, yeah. It, I'm I'm a little I'm a little nervous and mainly like you said because I like to kind of control things a little bit so that and plus we have our own developer and stuff like that but like I mean if 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 you're getting results all that matters is if you get results right so totally. whether or not you do it with your hands or a robot you know it's the result that matters so yeah you know what you know whatever gets you the result man <laughs> <laughs> yeah man totally totally um, awesome uh, let's see last thing. Um, you know, what would be your, I mean, biggest tip for someone who is just starting out with PPC um, and is starting out launching their product, you know, and wants to make sure that they're controlling their costs and, and wants to be profitable? Like what, you know, how would you walk them through that process to make sure that, you know, they get set up, set up in the right way? Um, what I would do is, so like, okay, so let's say you have a brand new product, right? Now, I don't know if you're going to launch PPC before or after your reviews. So you want to decide that. So number one, that's a number one diagnosis. Hey, do we want to do PPC before reviews or after reviews? If you want to go aggressive, you know, you do want to do it before the reviews. Um, I highly recommend doing um, setting a target spend for the day for the product um, and then forecasting that out for 30 days and then forecasting that out for 60 days and just seeing how much money it is because <laughs> you have to, you know, you're going to be spending money. And so you got to know how much money you're going to spend because $40 a day times 30 is different than $40 a day. You know what I mean? When you look at it. So, you know, look at your numbers, how much your budget, and then what you want to do is make sure that you uh, launch. I, we usually do what we do. We do three auto campaigns instead of three auto campaigns, auto campaign number one. Um, so what happens is when you launch an auto campaign, Amazon gives you suggested bids. They give you three, three suggested bids. There's going to be one in the middle, the big one, and then there's going to be one on your, uh, if you're looking at the screen, it'll be on your right-hand side. And then there's going to be one on your left-hand side. The one on your right-hand side, the, the higher end of the bid spectrum, that's the 75th percentile. And so generally, you know, if you bid there, you're really going to get a lot more clicks, a lot more impressions, going to be really high. The middle one is the 50th percentile and the lower one is 25th percentile. So what we like to do is we like to do one auto campaign that's, you know, equivalent to the higher bid one auto campaign that's equivalent to the mid bid, and then one auto campaign that's equivalent to the lower bid. The reason we do that, and we usually set it about, I think we'll do like, I mean, it depends on how much you're willing to spend, do like 10 bucks ish. And the reason we do that is because we know the first auto campaign, that high one is going to run out. And so when that high one runs out, that second auto campaign is going to kick in. It's called waterfalling. And the second auto campaign kicks in and you're going to get that longer tail traffic, right? You're not going to get as much volume, but you're going to still get impressions and clicks in a different part of the, of the ad section. The third one usually never 
produces anything almost. Um, but we do it because there have been instances where it like does produce something, but generally the first two are the most active. So that's what we do with our auto launching auto campaigns. And then with manual campaigns, you know, it, it can get really sophisticated. If you want to keep it simple, I do recommend like, you know, when you do keyword research and you write your listing, you know, Nick, Nick's going to teach you guys how to do that. And, um, you know, that's, that's a different skill set is writing the listing and the listing thing. So you're going to want to take those phrases from your, from your title. Right. And you're going to want to like, um, start bidding on those phrases, the ones that are just like, okay, those are perfect. And you're going to want to test those. Dude, we, we out the gate, we do exact, we do, um, we don't do just auto campaigns. Some people what they do is auto and then they'll just let those run and then pull from the auto. We go a bit more aggressive. We just make assumptions. We just say, you know what? This is describes my product. I should be converting for this. Yeah. So we'll do manual campaigns, exact phrase and broad. And, um, you know, whatever your difference, however much it, you're like, if you're, if your auto campaigns are like 10, 20 bucks, then do like 10, 20 bucks for those. And then just measure the spend. Cause they're not, they don't always spend clean like that. And then, um, but you'll want to, I bid on those in exact phrase and broad. And what we've been doing is, so get those really relevant ones that describe your product and then definitely do like reverse ASINs on maybe your top three competitors, do a reverse ASIN using like a Cerebro or a keyword inspector or something like that and see what things are happening. Like, um, that you should really enjoy this process because I mean, I do, and you learn so much like keyword research I could do for six. I've done keyword research for really long periods of time. And even though it makes my eyes hurt, I really enjoy <laughs> it. <laughs> like it's the SEO in me. So totally. like you really want to like understand things like pull keywords that make sense. Right. And then test them. Um, and then basically like test them in exact phrase and broad, like the really relevant stuff. Also what I recommend is uh, what we do is we used to do like a fixed bid, but what we're going to start testing is um, using suggested bids. So um, when you bid on the exact phrase and broad, you can apply the suggested bid. And what we're what we're what we're, we're kind of testing is like doing like twenty five percent above that suggested bid and seeing how that works. We usually do exact is like two dollars and twenty two cents. Phrase is like a dollar seventy eight. And then broad is like a dollar thirty or twenty, like something like that, because um, that really worked for like the majority of products. If you're in supplements, things like that, it might be a little more difficult. You now you need to go higher, um, but you could you could either do those fixed bids or tr- test the suggested bids out. And then that that's what, for launches. That's what I recommend is like testing, uh, getting some manuals out the door and autos out the door, and then start running traffic to those. Um, and any keywords you want to rank for, you definitely want to test in PPC. Totally. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, yeah, uh, you know, adding those manual campaigns is a really, really great tip. And, you know, now we have all these awesome tools like seller tools where you can pull exact search volume and then you can take your like top 20 or top 30, you know, based off of exact search volume from greatest to lowest and then just plug them in because it's already vetted. Like it's not a guess anymore. You know, these are, these are keywords that you know, and you can eyeball and say, these are relevant for sure. And apply to my listing and you can plug them in and you can feel confident around bidding on them early on. And that'll allow you to maximize that 14 day window. So that's a really awesome tip. Cool. Uh, last question. So from Sanjay, uh, do you like bid plus? <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, um, do I like bid plus? Um, conceptually it sounds beautiful. Um, so basically, uh, for everyone in the, in the audience, bid plus is a mechanism that will, um, allow Amazon to spend 50% above your current, the, the bid that you've put in there, right? So 50% above. So if you spend a dollar, if your bid's a dollar, then it allows Amazon to spend up to a dollar 50 for a click to give you. And the goal here is for them to, like their selling point on this is that using big plus will give you like better placement in the ad auction. I did run a study. I mean, dude, I haven't done extensive tests with this, but I did do a controlled test with one of my bigger clients with bid plus and, um, didn't see a difference. I'm going to be honest. We just didn't see a difference. Like I literally didn't touch them for two weeks. I mean, this was about like six months ago. Cause I don't really like to play with it that much. Cause in, no one in my mastermind, I'm in a PPC, nobody uses it. And it's just like, um, so yeah, do I like bid plus? Um, you know, I, no, <laughs> cause if I did, I would use it, I guess. <laughs> so, so I guess no. I don't know. <laughs> so like, I don't have any strong feelings for or against bid plus. Like, you know, 
That's so funny. But yeah, yeah. I, I, I've actually, you know, I'm in this million dollar group and I pretty much read the same thing. Like, you know, most people haven't found bid plus to really, um, to really do anything. And honestly, I feel like it's partially a scam for Amazon to make more money from you. You know, Amazon is always trying to charge you up the ass, um, for all these different things. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't heard anything uh, from anyone about bid plus. It's never been like a major thing. Sanjay, do you use bid plus? And if so, have you seen any results that would like debunk our current thoughts? Yeah. I mean, I'm curious if you guys have experienced with bid plus, Ben, it sounds like you experiment a lot with PPC. So I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I personally have not heard anything good. I'd love to hear something different. Um, cool. Well, uh, I think we're going to start wrapping up. Um, but guys, I just want you, uh, to, to know. So Sean is actually, he co-created one of the modules with us in the private label MBA, which is really exciting. We, we made the strategy called the PPC blitz strategy, which, which we use in our business as well. And we also have an entire module that Sean, uh, it, you know, we do a co co video, and uh, he talks about optimization strategies, just the entire process from campaign budget management, um, you know, cutting bleeders, uh, finding search terms, all that kind of stuff. And we do a walkthrough. Um, it's really, really gold content. Um, so, yeah, if you guys want to sign up for a webinar, uh, link is in the post. Um, you can join us on Friday and we'll talk more about kind of the MBA and what's going on there. But Sean, do you want to talk more about where people can find you and where they can hit you up about, you know, PPC? Yeah, um, I just Sean at ppcamsaccelerator.com if you have any questions about PPC. Okay, cool. And uh, and yeah, you have a partner too, right? Taylor, and he's an expert at AMS. Yes, 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 yes. I believe he will be posting in Seller Tradecraft tomorrow um, awesome. if, my if my calculations are correct. <laughs> um, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah. So for the PPC AMS Accelerator, it's a seven, it's like an online training program we put together, and it's um, basically I do the sponsored products portion of it since uh, my the agency that I run only does sponsored products, and he only does headline search and product display. And so we partnered up to create you know a program that teaches people how to do scale scale it right. It, you know, it's not it's it's more for established sellers um, because that's who we've you know had the most experience with and built our systems for. Awesome. Awesome. Really cool. Okay. We're going to do one last question. Uh, Vivian Chang asks, if someone clicks the same sponsored products a hundred times, will Amazon charge it 100 times? That's a really good question. Vivian, Gucci. Um, so let's see here. That's a good question. So Amazon, um, so they claim to kind of have like a fraud, like detection software. Um, uh, I can't remember where I read this. It's in, it's somewhere in like, I think the question mark over the clicks, if you click learn more, you know, me just clicking on little boxes and reading them. But, um, I believe to my knowledge, they have like a, a fraud detection software. So, um, I've been in situations where people have been victims of click fraud, where, uh, somebody might create a bot that rotates IP addresses you know, around the world or around the nation. And it would just cl keep clicking on their ad. And then you would see this huge spend. Um, then, so yeah, you know, I, I haven't had any experience with it lately. This was kind of a while ago, so maybe it's going down, but yeah, you, you know, that's, that's called click fraud and it can't yeah. happen. Yeah. I mean, I, I've actually gotten emails of with Amazon saying, Hey, you were overcharged for PPC, blah, blah, blah. It yeah. happens for sure. And, and Amazon is on it, but, but who really knows, you know, Amazon's kind of a, uh, a kind of a black box. <laughs> well, it's, you know, I would say like, it's, it's two part, like Amazon's partly to blame. And then the internet is partly to blame because the internet's really easy to do stuff on. Like, you know, uh, you know, bots are really, you know, pretty easy to make and, you know, it's not, you know, it's hard to track that stuff. So I, I think they're getting better. But yeah, I think I think, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's a big problem, and it can burn some money. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so Sean, I put it up PPC AMS accelerator.com Sean at you guys can reach him here. Um, yeah. Guys, show some love to Sean, put some likes, put some hearts, <laughs> show him in the comments. I, I really appreciate Sean spending time I'm with us to just, uh, yeah, share his knowledge and drop some Gucci bombs. Yeah, dude, I'm a hearts guy. If you guys ever see me on, <laughs> on some posts, I do the hearts. I go that extra mile. <laughs> yeah, just so, so give them some hearts, man. Uh, <laughs> give a man some hearts. Treat others as you would like to be treated. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. Well, uh, that's it. That's a wrap. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this. 
Um, again, if you guys want to get more information, uh, check out our webinar. That'll be on Friday. Uh, we'll have the link in, um, in the post. All right. Take it easy, Sean. Talk to you soon, Bye. Bye, brother. Thank you.